I am your host, Fat Dag, and you're listening to Wise Advice. My weight loss journey failed when I focused on how. It wasn't until I switched my focus to why that I truly transformed myself. Join the show on the web at fatdag.com and follow along on Twitter at Wise Advice. Send me your comments, your questions, your celebrations, and I'll include them as part of the show. But before we dive in, remember, when you're out of points, stop eating points. Hey, I'm honored to be your wingman as we walk through this journey together because I believe in you. All right, folks, so welcome to episode 34 of Wise Advice. Here we are. Uh, Go ahead and talk about a post I put on Connect earlier about a term that I've heard called synchronicity or the law of attraction. I kind of want to get that out there and throw it out there just to kind of explain it a little deeper than I could in the post. And and it all has to do with us focusing. Uh, yeah, as you know, to get through this journey, we've got to stay focused. We've got to stay disciplined. We've got to have our mind in the game. And and one of the things I think we can do to help keep our mind in the game is to is to start focusing on what it is we want. And so here's what I mean by that is if you if your goal weight, if you're trying to get down to 145 pounds, just just kind of think of that number 145. And and I want you just to think about it and pause and think about it. 145. 145. And then as you go about your day, see how many times that number comes up. If you go to the restaurant and you pay for your dinner and it's $14.50 at or or you buy something for for $145 or you buy something for $1.45 a car passes you with 145 in the license plate all of those signals when you see that will remind you of what you're trying to do it'll remind you that your goal weight's 145 so what i want you to do i want you to stay focused i want you to stay disciplined but i want you to pick a number that means something to you whether it's the amount of weight you want to lose whether it's the goal weight that you want to hit, whether it's the weight you just lost, allow them to enter into your mind, allow them to enter into your view. And as you see those numbers out there, it's a constant reminder that you're doing hard work. You're getting it done and you're doing it properly. And, uh, and, and just let that just again, reaffirm to you that you're, you're doing a great job. So that's kind of want to kind of how I wanted to explain that, uh, and we'll dive right into some of the emails that you guys sent in to me. First, obviously, Louise, Louise out of Arkansas writes in and says, I finally get it. Uh, so I've been working the plan since July of 2016. After hearing your podcast number 32, it finally hit the right note for me. Don't get me wrong, I'm down 40 pounds, but hearing you explain about making it work for me just made the light bulb go off. I would also like to say thanks for being my weekend backup. Weekends are my weakest time, and I find listening to the podcast while I do all those weekend chores really help me stay on track. Thanks. Well, Louise, this is exactly why I, I do this, right? And, and I, I recognize in my journey, this is my fifth time doing Weight Watchers. I didn't have a good go at it the first few times. And and always because is that weekly meeting is very valuable. It's very important. Uh, I got a lot of information out of that weekly meeting, but that was 30 minutes of an entire week. For those 30 minutes, I could stay really focused, and that focus would usually carry through for a few hours after, maybe a day or two after, but it very rarely did that determination carry through for an entire week. So I've recognized that in my own journey, I need, I need this constant focus seven days a week. I need it 24 hours a day, seven days a week if I'm going to make this. I had to adjust the plan to me, and so I'm glad that you recognize that as well for you, that the the more we stay in the game, the better off we're going to do here. So... So great, great job there. Thanks for writing in. 40 pounds is phenomenal. I mean, you, you don't lose 40 pounds by accident. So obviously you've got some discipline. You you have a ton of discipline because you just don't do that on accident. So just what I'm going to ask you to do is continue to focus. Focus on what it is that you're looking for. Focus on what it is that you want. Take care of you. Adjust the schedule for you. When you get to goal, you can now reintroduce some things. You can change things up a little bit because when you get to the goal weight, it's different. I promise you it's different when you get there. So so great job there. Uh, and last point, uh, I, rec- I numbered the, the podcast number 32 just to make it exactly like you said, easier to for us to reference. So so now you say number 32 is your favorite. You log it in, and every once in a while you go back and you read 32, listen to 32, and, and you keep going. So uh, that's that's great stuff there. So, uh, Luis, thanks for the email, and, and continue to go after it. You've got this, and I'm real proud of you. 40 pounds down, great work. 
Very cool. Next up, uh, Colleen again writes in and says, uh, out of Glassboro, New Jersey, uh, thanks for doing what you do. Now my question. I've been struggling quite a bit to get to goal. I've not been maintaining the same weight. Sorry, I have been maintaining the same weight since November, give or take five pounds. I feel like my body is comfortable at the weight, but I'm not at a healthy BMI yet. I'm not at a Weight Watcher, at a weight in the acceptable guidelines for Weight Watchers, but I'm considering talking to my doctor about making this weight my goal weight. I feel like it's cheating the program, bringing the finish line to me instead of me running towards it. But quite honestly, I'm tired of paying. Six months is a long time to stay the same weight and still keep posting for Weight Watchers. How do you feel about this? Well, Colleen, first and foremost, if, if uh, what I want to say, if, if you've been maintaining the same weight, that's what uh, lifetime is. So you have the ability to do that. You know how to do that. That is easy to do. Uh, we've got to get you to your goal weight. Now, hey, I'm not concerned whether or not your goal weight is a BM, is a healthy BMI or not. Uh, it, we do have a you know a, a range when the healthy weight that you want to be in, but that's not going to work for everybody. But it, from the sounds of your email, it sounds like it probably could work for you. But we're just we're having a hard time getting to that finish line. So here's what I would say. I, I you know, if you're looking for me to, to answer your question, uh, it sounds like you already know the answer based on how you asked it. But if you're asking me to, to give you permission to move the finish line just to satisfy the goal, I'm not going to do that. Uh, that's not how I, I'm going to operate this thing. I think you have the ability to get there. I think if you look at your tracker, look for the blue dot. How many blue dots have you earned in the last three weeks? If it's not 21, then I challenge you to go for that. Get those blue dots. Go for three weeks in a row. Get blue dots every day for three weeks in a row. See if you can't get to goal. I bet you can. I bet that's where we're at. So typically when we get closer to our goal weight, that's when we start getting that complacency thing we talked about. You're feeling really good at the weight that you're at. You look good. You know you look good. You know you feel good. So it's a little easier on some weekends to eat a little more than you normally would have had when you started your journey. So my challenge to you, rather than moving your goal weight, rather than talking to your doctor, is track, 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 and get to goal. Because what I don't want you to have happen is I don't want you to get to your goal weight, that you, that you moved your goal weight, you get a note from your doctor, and, and when you get there, you're still not satisfied. Because that's the worst you can do, is when you get there and you, and you hit goal, but you know you, you're not there it's going to mess with your head a little bit. And, and I don't want that to happen to you. So, so again, that's how I'm going to say this. How many blue dots did you get? Let's go tracking. Let's do an honest effort of tracking, uh, and let's see where you end up. So great job. Keep doing what you're doing. Obviously, the program works for you. you. You're just stuck in a complacency trap that we've just got to break through. It's a mindset. It's a mind shift, and you can do it. How bad do you want it? Thanks for the email. Appreciate that. Next up, uh, we got uh, John out of Monroe, Louisiana. John writes in and says, Fat Dag, the podcast has been a lifesaver. Thank you so much. The mantras you keep repeating are taking roots in my brain, and they are helping at the right moments. Question number one, when can we expect a Fat Dag book? You know you got to write one, right? Question mark. Uh, I'll answer that one right now, and then I'll get back to the rest of your email, John. Hey, John, um, just so you know, I've got two books in the works, to believe it or not. And uh, but don't get excited because one of them's been in the works for about five years. So uh, I don't know when that one's going to be on the table uh, to get published. But uh, we'll see where that comes. But uh, maybe I'll find some motivation now to tap in and finish that one up. And then uh, I got another project that I'm working on with uh, with a, another friend of mine. Uh, we're going to do a tag team on a book. So. That there is, uh, they're in the works, but like I said, don't get excited. That could be many, many years before they hit to print. So for, for, the, for the meantime, just log in and hang into the podcast and we'll go there. So that's the answer to that. Uh, next up, so to continue on in your email, it says, you started Weight Watchers in January. I can't tell you how many times I've started. I'm 53 and I've been overweight for as long as I can remember. This time though, I feel like I got a wingman and a different perspective. I'm down 28 pounds so far. My question relates to arranging my points throughout the day. I like to eat at night, but I feel this is probably not best. 
Uh, I end up at night with over half of my points. I have a lot of points because I have a lot to lose. When it comes to mealtime, I'm working real hard to keep my points down instead of eating my points then. But at night, I have enough left for treats still within the points, but not really healthy foods. So, any ideas you can offer on this situation will be welcomed. Uh, and again, that's John out of Monroe, Louisiana. And then he says at the bottom, which is I thought was really cool, an awesome shout out to his Weight Watcher leader, Terry, who's obviously doing phenomenal work. He says she's awesome, and I absolutely believe him. And uh, so very cool on that. So so here's the question, John. Is uh, Number one is, um, you know, the lifestyle that you're living right now. You've, you've lost a little bit of weight. You're doing the program. You're, you're doing well. Um, and so you're, you're trying to balance your points for the evening. And so if we're focused on the trend line, if it doesn't, if regardless of where you eat and when you eat, uh, if you, if you stay on the plan, the plan's going to work for you. So definitely there is that to be considered. Now, if you're at the end of the night and you have points left and you're, and you're naturally gravitating to those unhealthy treats that you talked about, that's something we've got to work on. The beauty of Weight Watchers is you can eat whatever you want as long as you track it, as long as you stay within your points. Now, we know that is true at the, at the, you know, the basic premise of that. What's not true is, is for the, as you start losing points, you're not going to be able to maintain a healthy diet if, if you don't eat some healthy food. So a lot of those sugary foods and those unhealthy foods have got to go away, but they've got to go away naturally. So, you know, if you started day one and they said you could never have this ever again, then you would feel like you're depriving yourself. At some point, as you start losing weight, you're going to make a natural shift to healthier foods. And I want you to get there a little quicker than the program would probably force you to, because I think you're ready. Because you've identified it in your words that you know you're not eating healthy food. And so if you know that, why don't we start eliminating them? Why don't we replace them with a healthy option? You know, add in some extra protein, add in some fruit and some vegetables. Those are free. Uh, There's zero point items that you can that you can certainly have. And it feels really good to make that shift. And then when you look up and you and you have all these extra points left over, there are healthy alternatives that you can use to sustain your food. So I would, I would also then, you know, if you, again, if you know that, is let's start balancing your day out a little more and let's move some of those points into the morning and then at night relying on fruits and vegetables. And then when you're at a point, stop eating points and, and that'll get you to there. So that's where I would kind of give you that answer on that. And you, you've got to ask the question is, can you sustain what you're doing? You know, if, if you're all of a sudden you're eating all your points in the day, is that a sustainable model for you? And the reality is, is if it is, then go with it. You know, and I don't know. I don't know your lifestyle in that regard, so I can't give you a true answer on that. But, but the fact that you pose the question lets me leads me down the path that you know the right answer. So, so that's what I say to you, John. Uh, is, is go ahead and just kind of try and ease. It's what typically in, in my world is the way I do. I get thirty four points a day. I divide them in thirds. Uh, so I eat, you know, you know, a third of them in the morning, a third of them for lunch, and third from third of them for dinner. And then my snacks become fruits and vegetables. So I try and do that to keep a balanced day. And, uh, and I just rock the program at that point. So let's see how that goes. And everything you try, try it for three to four weeks. See if you get the results on the scale you're looking for. See if you start feeling better. And if you are, stick with it. So you can do this. You absolutely can do this. It's absolutely possible. You've got to remain focused. You've got to remain disciplined. But you have the ability to get it done. So go do it. Thanks for writing in, John. And great job, Terry. Good job to you for, for keeping John on track. I like it. Uh, and last, certainly not least, Christine out of Portland, Oregon, writes down. She's 28 pounds down. She's hit her 10%. And her email says, I'm very proud to have lost 28.2 pounds since February 12th of 17. Received my 10% charm and my 25-pound charm today. I shared about your podcast and passed on your message of focus to our group. I'm grateful for your podcast. You're an awesome wingman. Thank you. Well, Christine, uh, I had nothing to do with you doing what you just did. 10% and 25 pounds down. That's all you. Uh, You rocked it. You stayed focused. You stayed disciplined. And you got it done. Uh, Continue on the program. Obviously, you are. And I can tell you're going to do that. But 10% is cool. 10% 10% is that second goal on your journey, and that's a, that's a big number. 25 pounds is significant. 
25 pounds, you can feel the difference. You can see the difference. People that you know, that you see, they can see the difference at 25 pounds. It just barely becomes visible for them, to them at that point, but they, because they don't want to question it, because they don't really know, but they do know, and it can, it's visible. So, so that's what that 10% and that 25 pounds represents. It represents your discipline, focus, and dedication to get this done, and you're doing it. So I'm super proud of you, and uh, it's, it's an honor to be a wingman. It's an honor with you to sit here and tell you how proud of you I am, and I want you to keep going. I want you to push forward. I want you to track. I want you to stand the plan, and I want you to reach your goal. I want you to step on that scale one last time in a weight loss mode, and I want you to know you did it. Then we'll start all over in a whole new journey called Lifetime, and you'll maintain this weight for the rest of your life, but it's going to feel amazing, and it all starts because you got to 10%. If you got to 10%, you have the ability to get to goal. It's just a matter of sticking with the program, staying focused and disciplined. I know you can do it. So, Christine, thank you for that. Uh, very great job. Man, it's really, really exciting stuff. Folks, what are you celebrating? What do we want to talk about? Uh, you know, I always ask at the end of the show is to go ahead and email me on air at fatdag.com. Go to fatdag.com, click on podcast, send me your questions. I'll work them in as part of the show. Go ahead to Twitter uh, and Instagram and Facebook, all at Wise Advice. We'll get them in. You know, we, we just want to, I just want to kind of celebrate with you. I want to talk to the program with you. I want to keep your head in the game. I want to keep you focused. I want to keep you disciplined because, you know, at, at the end of the day, that's how you get this done. So great job to all you out there. And uh, remember, that's going to do it for this time. So losing weight, getting healthy has nothing to do with luck. you gotta, you got to remain disciplined. you got to remain focused. Set your sights on those goals and go after it. I wish you good focus. 